Hello and welcome to Visa News. I'm Jawati Hami. There has been a worldwide condemnation of the Israeli strike on a tent camp in Rafah, and as a result of which, at least 45 people, including mostly women and children, have perished. This huge inferno, and these women and children, uh, their bodies were literally melting in that huge inferno uh, that has been targeted by Israeli missile strike. Now, this strike, interestingly, surprisingly, or whatever you may say, has happened just a few days after the International Court uh, of Justice's uh, ruling, ordering Israel to halt its military offensive in Rafah and also open the Rafah crossing between Egypt and Gaza. Now, regarding uh, this particular uh, strike Palestinian presidency in a statement has said, let me quote, that the perpetration of this heinous massacre by the Israeli occupation forces is a challenge to all international legitimacy resolutions, adding that the Israeli forces are deliberately targeting the tents of the displaced people, unquote. Now, at the same time, we have seen a statement coming from the United Nations Palestinian a refugee agency is saying, let me quote, the images from Rafa are yet another testament that Gaza is a hell on earth, unquote. The OIC has renewed its call on the international community, especially the United Nations Security Council, to fulfill its responsibility in compelling Israeli regime to implement the orders of International Court of Justice to stop this Israeli aggression immediately. On the other hand, ironically, surprisingly, or paradoxically, whatever you may say, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu says the incident was a tragic mistake and investigation to obtain the conclusion is underway. Uh, during the course of our discussion in today's show, we'll also try to touch upon the recent recognition of a Palestinian state by Spain, Ireland, and Norway also, especially at a time when over 36,000 innocent people in Gaza have lost their lives at the hands of the brutality of Israeli regime and Israeli defense uh, forces, which continues unabated. Let me quickly bring in our panelists. We are honored to have been joined in the studio by Mr. Abu Bakr Yunus. He is Arab journalist, Mr. Yunus, thank you very much for your time for thank being you. with us on the show tonight. Really appreciate that. On Skype, at the same time, we are honored to have been joined by Air Marshal retired Ashfaq Arain, senior analyst. Air Marshal Arain, thank you very much for your time also for being with us on the show tonight. Really appreciate that. Now, uh, Mr. Yunus, if you allow me, let me begin the discussion with uh, Air Marshal Arain. Air Marshal Arain, now looking, by looking at these two statements, one coming from the Presidency of Palestine and the other also coming from Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu. Now, Israeli Prime Minister says this is a tragic mistake. On the other hand, we see the Palestinian Presidency in a statement saying that this is the deliberate targeting of the tent camps in which people are sheltering. As per your understanding, is it a tragic mistake or is it a deliberate uh, targeting of the tent camps? Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I, I just cannot imagine somebody saying it as a tragic mistake because that's a small area. Israel had asked Palestinians or the people of that area to stay in that camp. How can there be an, such a mistake that so many aircraft go and bomb that area and continue to bomb that area? It's actually uh, just a, a, a trying, the, the, the Israel is trying to hide behind this uh, facade of a mistake. Otherwise, it's clear as day that it was a planned thing, it was an intended thing, and they wanted the people in that area to suffer, in living in that camp to suffer, because there were no buildings, they were all living in tents. So actually with bombing and missile strikes, all the people have been actually burnt. So uh, it, it just can't be ex accepted that it was a mistake. And military plans after eight months of uh, war cannot go so haywire that you just go and bomb a place by mistake. 
Right, uh, Mr. Rain, when we talk about there has been a worldwide condemnation of this particular attack, including uh, those countries from the West also, specifically if I uh, mention a couple of names from, of those countries, including Spain, Ireland and Norway, we understand these three countries have recently recognized a separate Palestinian state and there is a kind of a formula that has also been uh, put forth by the uh, Spanish Prime Minister in order to achieve peace in this particular region. When we also talk about the European Union, Germany, Italy, and also France, especially uh, talking about French President Emmanuel Macron saying that he's been outraged uh, by this particular uh, missile strike on part of Israel. Uh, now, at the same time, the UK has uh, urged Israel to expedite the investigation into this particular incident. Similar sort of comments as far as the investigation into the incident is concerned coming from Israeli Prime Minister himself also the top prosecutor of Israeli regime also do you expect any sort of investigation happening in this regard I, I don't think that there will be any investigation the first thing is that almost everybody believes that it was a planned thing and even if it was not planned the way Israel has been uh, uh, brutally going through this genocide for the last about eight months and even before that for all these years they've been killing the Palestinian people so I don't think there will be any accountability if it was an error there could be an investigation it will be purely a whitewash or an eyewash for the international community because Israel is uh, quite under pressure uh, from the condemnation from the international community and many who earlier supported Israel in the name of self-defense are also now distance, distancing away and they, they have realized the gravity of the criminality of Israeli acts in uh, Gaza during last about eight months. So I don't think there will be any worthwhile result of this investigation. It will be just a slow process. They, they would just want this condemnation to uh, go away for the time being and then the things will be as uh, as usual. Uh, right, let me proceed in the discussion. Mr. Yunus, uh, is it a tragic mistake or a deliberate attempt to target the civilians taking shelter in the tent camps? Killing people in tents, it's not a mistake, of course. You see, we have an occupier who occupied Palestine since 100 years now. Now, those are, this is a mistake, to give the occupiers a land and tell them, take this land, make, your, make, make it your home, kill as much as you can, and then when they kill somebody, we say, oh, it's a mistake. No, no, the, mis the real mistake is to, ha to let the occupation and to recognize the occupation to, and to name, them, to name them as a state. We have to name them as the prime occupier. We, this is not the prime minister, Netanyahu, he's the prime occupier. This is not a state. This, 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 these are, uh, uh, this is an occupier state. This is all settlers. Those people have to move, have to go out from Palestine. We don't accept them anymore. We actually haven't accepted them before. So we are not accepting them. And even you are saying the recognition of uh, Palestine from Spain and from Ireland. Ireland and Norway. The, the, what, what, which kind of state they are recognizing? I don't know, a state of Palestine, which uh, Gaza and West Bank, is, th is, is this the state? No, we don't want this. We want Palestine itself, from the river to the, to the sea. This is the Palestine. But g giving us 5%, 10%, 8% of Palestine, saying, okay, you live there after we kill as much as we want, and you live there under our mercy, you live there under our control, this is not a state. So that's what we don't want. We want our country back, we want our land back, we want our holy place back. Not only us, this, this, is, this is something, you know, the whole world have to accept it. Why should we accept the occupiers? And then should we say, oh, they have made here a mistake? Oh, they have no, no, no. This is all is a mistake. Ma giving the Jewish a land of, uh, of Palestine and name it as Israel is a mistake. This is all mistake have to stop, have to end. We are facing all this problem because of the Jewish occupiers in Palestine. It is not because only this attack. So it is 100 years now. 75 since it was recognized, before that there was many wars to occupy Palestine. So this is the real mistake. Okay, so the kind of brutality, the reign of terror that has been unleashed on the part of Israeli defense forces at the behest of Israeli regime since 7th of October, specifically talking about this formula that has been presented by Spanish Prime Minister, 
Uh, three important points. Firstly, an urgent end to the war in Gaza, including a permanent ceasefire, the entry of humanitarian aid and the release of captives. The kind of damage, death and destruction, the kind of um, uh, suffering that we have seen over the last seven months over there in Gaza, people succumbing to these missile strikes. I mean, don't you think a permanent ceasefire at this particular point in time is very necessary? Uh, after that, who will be responsible for this killing? The Palestinians or the, the, the Israelis. So just permanent ceasefire doesn't mean that we actually have, the justice have taken its place. A justice will only take place when those uh, Israelis, so-called Israelis, those Jewish and uh, occupied Palestine be taken to justice and f face all the crimes they have made, plus taking them out from Palestine. Then the justice will take place. Other than this, the permanent ceasefire, a ceasefire, Stopping the killing of the Palestinians, this is something have to happen, but this will not happen because, you know, now there's a thing that they are above the law. There's no law can control them. There's no international law, no United Nations. They, kill them, but they, have, they are showing us that they are above the law. Right. Uh, let me once again proceed yes. towards Mr. Arai. Mr. Arai, when we uh, talk about this particular act that was committed, perpetrated on the part of Israeli uh, regime uh, just yesterday, uh, it was a few days, just a few days after that, ICJ's ruling ordering Israel not to uh, push ahead with uh, its military offensive in Rafah. In fact, ordering it to stop its military offensive in Rafah, also opening the Rafah crossing between Egypt and Gaza. So, uh, looking at the timing of this particular strike, isn't it ironic that we've also seen earlier the interim injunctions by International Court of Justice the way they were reacted to by the Israeli officials. And now after this particular new order, this particular strike comes. What does that basically depict? It, it indicates Israeli defiance of, of the International Court of Justice and even the appeal from uh, so many countries worldwide. So it, it actually shows defiance and they're just trying to hide behind for the time being. Uh, uh, saying that it was a mistake. Otherwise, for, they've been continuing with this for last so many months and how the Israeli government has been so critical of the ICJ. So the moment they have announced, uh, they asked for a ceasefire or uh, stopping of the brutalities, Israel did this in uh, and trying to hide behind uh, a mistake. I think it was a clear message to ICJ that whatever you tell us will keep doing it one way or the other. So it's a, it's, a, it's a blatant defiance of that particular ruling of the International Court of Justice. Now, at the, at the same time, the OIC has once again renewed its call on the international community as well as the United Nations Security Council in particular to assume its responsibility of compelling Israel to stop this aggression and implement the International Court of Justice's uh, ruling. Now, is there any a mechanism through which the United Nations Security Council, if it deems that this particular demand that has been made by the OIC should be uh, met and the ICJ's recent ruling should be implemented. In the UN uh, uh, Security Council, if it goes against Israel, is likely to be vetoed by the US. And OIC itself doesn't have a, a strong stance. If they are so willing to support uh, Palestine or the people of Gaza, why don't they stop uh, shipment of uh, petroleum to Israel? And why don't they take a harder stance? Why don't they put, pull back all their embassies from Israel, all those who have the diplomatic relations with... Uh, so I, I think uh, more than the OIC, I would say the youngsters in the West, in America, in almost about a hundred universities and so many other countries, they have been doing much more for the people of uh, Gaza than what the OIC is doing for them. It's more of a lip service asking the UN. Israel is not uh, uh, listening to ICJ. It wouldn't listen to the, the UN Security Council also because it has a support the, um, uh, the American support, the British support especially, so with the, uh, the, the support of these two countries, 
I don't think Israel is going to budge uh, with these resolutions, etc. Resolutions probably are not the solution at this point in time. Uh, uh, right. When we talk about the position of the U.S., we have seen uh, the kind of support Israel has got from the United States of America since 7th of October. We saw a shifting stance when it came to the statements of the high-ranking officials in the U.S. administration also that because of the disproportionate bombardment, Israel might lose the support uh, internationally. And that is what exactly we have seen and witnessed uh, during this particular span of seven months that the kind of narrative that has been built worldwide is clearly against Israeli atrocities. Given the fact this is going to be the election year in the U.S., what sort of um, policy um, policies the U.S. administration could actually adopt and implement if this administration is looking for a second term as a result of the elections in November? I, I think uh, the U.S. is the one who is the flag carrier of human rights and uh, equality and uh, for everything and democracy, etc. So they should not be looking at their elections. They should be looking at the values they carry and the values they try to propagate, they try to implement worldwide. They go for democracy, they destroy countries, they do everything for that. They haven't been able to do anything to Israel. They have been giving them economic aid even during this uh, conflict. They have been giving them military aid. They have been giving them with diplomatic support. So is, it, mere statements that uh, the, the, the international uh, Israel will lose international support. So that doesn't hurt Israel. Israel will be hurt by uh, the. Uh, in, 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 uh, the other communities as they are drawing away from Israel and they, they have reduced their support for Israel. But Americans, I don't think uh, they, they should be looking at the elections. They, th they should rather be looking at the value system they try to preach the entire world and they lead that. And uh, with the current situation, the way they have been supporting Israel, I don't think this administration is likely to uh, win the second term in the U.S. Because so the, the other side, the, uh, sir, uh, since the it's not involved in decision-making, the they have the advantage. So, so, so what are the policy options at the hands of the Biden administration at this point in time, given the fact there's been um, a huge wave of massive protests, especially in various top universities across the U.S.? The U.S. has the only option that they they should exert their pressure on Israel to stop this uh, bombing and genocide and let the aid flow to the uh, victims. And then they should uh, look for the rehabilitation of these people and all that support which is required. So th these are the first steps they should be taking. Otherwise, and probably this, if they do these things in the next couple of months, they, they may have favorable results in the, uh, uh, in the upcoming elections. Uh, right. Uh, Air Marshal retired Ashfaq Harani, senior analyst, joining us on Skype. Thank you very much for being with us on the show tonight. Really appreciate that. Mr. Yunus, now, the role of the U.S. administration at this point in time, we have seen the presentation of um, the resolutions at the United Nations Security Council a number of times vetoed by the U.S. Now, to the extent this particular suffering has reached. Given the fact there is election year in the U.S. also, what are the policy options for the Biden administration in particular? You see, amid those massive protests which are ongoing there. You see, of course, Biden or uh, what is it, the other one that uh, Trump was actually even speaking yesterday. He was saying that uh, if I would be I would come the uh, the, the deportation, uh, yeah, of the then I'm going to I'm going to remove all the students. I'm going to you know fight them back. So I, I think this administration doesn't have or do, doesn't think that we are uh, Palestinians are though are a human being have the same feelings, have the same future, have the same uh, present life, and they have to live as the other have to live. So they, they don't look to us in this way. So I think they might have uh, you know a, a strategy or a policy to, for election. They might change. So but we here. We don't rely on this because any change comes in U.S. It will not be uh, beneficial to, to 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 Palestinians, especially. 
that will be in the favor of Israel. That is something we are sure about it. So what is actually, what, 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 what is important for us is how we will deal with the situation on the ground. We have an army, fully advanced, have the most advanced weapons, uh, soldiers, and they have as well support from US, from Britain, from Italy, from France. So how to stop them from killing the Palestinians? This is the main problem. We, are th we don't have yet a strategy or a policy or a value of our decisions that can stop the Israeli from killing the Palestinians. So we are talking about yesterday massacre, which happened in the Rafah. It's not only yesterday, by the way, it's yesterday and today as well. So it is two happened, not one. It's, it's continuously happening. Happening, and then now today there is uh, the so tank, the Israeli military tanks have reached Rafah, so which means they want to kill more. It's not they want to kill more, yeah. and they'll continue to kill more. Yeah. They want well, to eliminate that's, us. That's, that's, that's what we have seen. That particular pattern, uh, quite clearly established mm -hmm. in front of the world community. We have seen those UNGA resolutions also. There had been strong condemnation from the United Nations Secretary General also, um, and then uh, the subsequent reaction of the Israeli regime towards. Uh, United Nations Secretary G uh, General, for how long this particular merciless killing uh, would continue? And where do you see this thing uh, heading? Is there any uh, sh full stop to this particular massacre that is happening the as the things are unfolding in the near future? Is there anything that can be done to stop it? And by looking at the kind of damage and the destruction that has happened on the part of Gazans, it's huge, it's humongous, in fact, True. as compared to what has been accrued on the Israeli side. So the only thing that can stop or will make them stop or decide to stop is the similar attack on them. So the Palestinians now understand that there is no way out, no negotiations, no talks, nothing can help. There is only a fight back. So now people are struggling for this because even if, if you go to any civilian now, any Palestinian living in Gaza, tell him, oh, so what, what, what is your decision? Should we sit and negotiate the Jews? You say, no, I want revenge for my kids, for my family, for people who have been killed, for my house who have been destroyed, for my future which have been destroyed. So it's not, it's, this is not the time to, to, to think of anything else, unle uh, uh, else than fighting them back. And this is the only thing will stop them. Fighting them back. That is exactly the point that I, I just want you to listen a little more in detail. Fighting back mm -hmm. uh, with uh, what sort of capacity till date we have seen that clear asymmetry as far as this particular conflict since uh, especially 7th of October is concerned. Mm -hmm. So uh, where that capacity is going to be developed in order to fight back, in order to have that victory over against this aggression on the part of Israeli regime? We have seven countries supporting Israel. It is America, France, Italy, uh, Britain, and I think two, three more, and I don't know, I don't know their names. So they are supporting Israel for their attack in, in this war. So we need the same. Okay, so we have seen- We need, a, we need some- <laughs> A shift in the stance, okay. Please. So this recognition of a separate Palestinian state on the part of Spain, Ireland, and Norway. Now, after that particular massacre that happened yesterday, We've seen a condemnation from Germany, Italy, also France, and the UK also urging Israeli regime to expedite that investigation into this particular incident. Isn't the stance of these Western countries also shifting clearly against what Israel is up to against the Gazans? Okay, the stance have shifted, but it's still on the ground, Israelis are killing. So this was yesterday attack, and there's another attack today. The attacks are continuously happening. They haven't stopped. The point is they haven't stopped. Netanyahu said that we will not stop until we take out, take back the, uh, the what to call it, the, the prisoners, of, uh, prisoners of Israel in Gaza. So he's not going to stop. Yes, there's stance, there is some speeches, there is some, but there is no real stance that, okay, fine, we will not support Israel. Stop Israel. If you missile, we will missile you. If you throw a missile, we will missile you back. Is this happening? No, this is not happening. So they continue what they're doing. Right. Uh, we are joined by another participant in the show, Mr. Please. Shahid M.G. Ikiani, his former ambassador. Mr. Ikiani, thank you very much for taking time out for views on news tonight. We really appreciate that. It's always great to have you on the show uh, with your insightful and very uh, informative discussion. Uh, now, uh, this particular uh, incident that happened in Rafa yesterday, the killing of at least 45 innocent children and women. Prime Minister of Israel Netanyahu calling it a tragic mistake. Palestinian presidency saying it is a deliberate targeting of the tent camps. What do you say about it? 
Mr. Taini, the thing is that killing of these innocent uh, Palestinians is no more news. This tragic, this tragedy which started last year continues unabated. And to the total silence, I'm sorry to say, of many of the Western countries. Now you are talking to, I think, I don't know, was it the Palestinian ambassador or, or some Arabic ambassador? I mean, some Arab ambassador. But let me just share with you why this is happening, why the Israelis are going for this desperate act of going against the very, the, the very what you call the voice, the global voice of the people, forget the government or the, or the voice. International Court of Justice, the International Criminal Court has also, you know, penalized some Palestinian leaders and the Israeli leaders. And this is a desperation on part of the, the Israeli government to go after the, the Palestinians in, in Rafah. And then say, you know, okay, this is uh, 40 people died, and we are very sorry. What about the other 36,000, those who died? Aren't they sorry for that? I tell you that there is a, there is a reason. There is a reason. The reason is going against the International Criminal Courts, you know, uh, penalizing Israel. The voice of, the global voice of the people, I said, forget the governments. This is the reason, if you see the three countries, Ireland, Spain, uh, and Norway, what, what are they saying? It is the voice of the people which is being projected by the governments of recognizing Palestine. Now, the, the, the irony is, Mr. Tahimi, the irony is that the Arab countries who matter in this, the neighbors of Israel, you know who they are. They are the ones who are silent partners, I'm sorry to say. Then the countries in the Gulf who have diplomatic relations with Israel, who have the, you know, the wherewithal, like you know, energy, uh, uh, you know, they can they can use the diplomatic muscle. They can use the energy muscle to to uh, force Israel to stop killing the the people in in Rafah. You know what news is making? So it's a mockery. News is that assistance is reaching the Palestinians, reaching whom? The people who die don't eat. The most important thing is to stop this war. This unending tragedy has to stop. But United States is also silent. Because of the election here in, in, in United States, no candidate can take this risk of condemning Israel in totality. That is the, the, the tragic tragedy. So, so, so now, where do we go? Mr. Kiani, what about the public opinion that is prevalent over there in the US and that very much in this particular election year? So, is it a narrow corridor for the uh, corridor for the Biden administration to navigate through? The thing is that yes, a large number of people in the United States feel that is an humanitarian issue. Yes, there is no doubt. But the Republicans' support is not only on the issue of of Israel, but on the you know they hark back to the to the past that the Jews were penalized in the past so now they are a victim you see the if you look at international criminal court they not only penalize the Israelis they penalize the Hamas leadership also because they consider them that they were the ones who first attacked Israel and this was the reaction so the story in is is being sold in in United States there is a public opinion getting larger who think who are not think rather they are saying that yes the war should stop if you look at so many of the president biden's uh, uh, public uh, campaigns in which people stood up and started started you know um, uh, raising voices so these are there but in totality to say that israelis are at fault we stop it i don't think any any republican or democrat leader can can, can take this risk. It is unfortunate, but this is a realist approach. Right. Uh, Mr. Kenny, when we talk about the European countries, especially Norway, Ireland, uh, and Spain recognizing a Palestinian state, uh, what effect does it carry with itself, this decision on the overall 
uh, situation in the Middle East and to achieve the lasting peace uh, in the Palestinian territories? You see, it, this is a, a positive development. But to say that this, these three countries, you know, can force Israel to change its opinion or the campaign which has launched, I don't think so. But this is a very positive development. And if it can garner support within the United Nations and other countries, Western countries, important, who, for example, Germany, France, United Kingdom, these are countries which are very important, who have a financial and, and economic and political muscle. If these countries can, can also join this, uh, this group, then pressure on, the, on, on Israel will force. If you look at the Spanish uh, uh, Prime Minister, Mr. Pedro, was speaking, what, what are they saying? You know, they're looking at this tragedy of this uh, Palestinian who are living in refugee camps for the last seven and a half decades. The thing is, they want a end to this misery. They want an end to this, uh, this, uh, this drama. They want a two-state solution. But I tell you, it is extremely difficult because Israel, within Israel, you have the settlers, their support within the political parties. And you know what, what they have done? They have taken Golan Heights, you see the, the, whole, the whole of Jerusalem, which is so important for all the three religions, the, Jew, the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims. It's a holy, holy place. So, and then, as I said to you, provided the Arab countries be, be united and force Israel to stop what they are doing. Otherwise, these three countries' recognition of Palestine is important, but not not in the manner in which we think that this can change the course of action of the Israelis. Uh, so uh, the reaction of the Israeli uh, foreign minister to this particular recognition of the part of Spain, Ireland, and Norway, uh, there's been a reaction. Uh, Israel has also uh, recalled uh, its ambassador to the three states and ordered Spain's Jerusalem consulate also to hold consular services. So do you think this particular recognition, as you already mentioned, could actually help exert pressure on Israel? But this retaliatory measure on the part of Israeli regime, do you think that is going to happen? I don't think so, but this is quite worrisome for the Israelis, especially for the leadership. Because if this, you know, uh, another few countries, Western countries join, then there can be trouble, especially if you look at the voting pattern in the United Nations. If the voting pattern in the United Nations changes for a Palestinian state and a two-state solution, then things can be very, very bad for the Israelis. I, I tell you very frankly, even with this ongoing war, the Israeli government is very weak and vulnerable. This is something very worrisome for the government there. There is a section of people in Israel itself who want to put an end to this war. They want to live in peace because if you if you look at it, it is surrounded by countries, yes, two, three countries who are not doing anything, but the vulnerability of Israelis have increased after this Gaza. So it is no more a country in which they say that, okay, no, no, nobody can attack us. The, the Hamas attack on, on, on Israel was, was a, you know, uh, as I said, that Israelis were in deep slumber and they woke up to this nightmare, a, a nightmare which is not ending. So let's hope, let us hope that sanity prevails. First, I tell you very frankly, okay, recognition is good, but sir, the most important thing at this time is the end to this war, this madness, this insanity, which is, has killed over 36,000. And tell you very frankly, among them, a fruit majority has been children. So this is something, and this is something which the public within the global world, even, even within the Western countries, are asking their governments as to when this war will end, because, because uh, human rights is a very important uh, part and parcel of the Western countries' you know, uh, daily life. Uh, right, uh, let me proceed towards Mr. Yunus. Uh, he seems to have a little different view as far as the two-state solution that has been uh, talked about by uh, Spanish Prime Minister also. Uh, Mr. Yunus, now this is the third point. 
Uh, the second one, the Palestinian Authority-led reform process. I've had your view regarding a permanent ceasefire and the entry of the humanitarian aid. Now, an international peace conference, he has suggested to implement the two-state solution. What, what do you say about it? First of all, <coughs> the Israelis themselves have refused totally two-state uh, solution. Right. And they actually refused to have border within any Arab country. So they say there's no border. You know, since the recognition of Israel till today, they have no borders. They, 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 there's no map for Israel because they actually, they are looking for the greater Israel, as they call, which is actually a, a, a bigger part, have part from Saudi Arabia, part from Egypt, part from Jordan. So this is, the, that's why they will, they will always refuse to stay a solution from the Israel side. So come to our side, Palestinians. Now, we know that the, the, our land has been occupied since almost 100 years now. Right. So why should we accept this two-state solution? Because of what? This is our land, we want it back. So it's not correct that we accept and we you know, look forward for something you know, uh, in, in the favor of our occupier. So he's, it is our, they are our, our occupiers, and the, the only solution is that they leave the country. It's not the, 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 the solution is that we give them part of our country. It is something, you know, common sense can't accept it. Uh, let me take this particular Please. point to Mr. Kiani. Uh, Mr. Yunus is of the view that this particular, <coughs> our land has been occupied illegally. So uh, a two-state solution to them is not even acceptable because it's their land and the illegal occupiers should be done away with completely and they must leave this particular territory. Uh, is there any way to uh, undo the historical injustice Mr. Yunus has just alluded to? Let me just say to you, you know, uh, ideally, what Mr. Yun is saying is right. If you look at the Balfour Declaration in 1948, the UN resolution, which brought the, the, the creation of Israel, the Palestinians, Arabs, have been living in this land for thousands of years. Now, what the Israelis are saying that it is the Torah, which, you know, gives them, or the Talmud gives them the right to come here. This is a distortion of history. There is absolutely no doubt about it. In the beginning, when the state came into being, you see, there was a war in '48, and they gave an understanding to the, you know, to the to the to the Palestinians also, just before the war began, and the that okay, we will we will allow you to stay, live peacefully this and that. They are illegal occupiers of this land. There is absolutely no doubt about it. What has happened is in the '48, '67, and 1973 war, they have expanded to an extent where, believe it or not, this is not what the Balfour Declaration or the UN Resolution had wanted. They wanted that this area, this land, should be within, should, should in which the Israelis and the Palestinians should, should live and coexist. But this has not happened. At this time, the Gaza, I would say, war has given a wake-up call to the Palestinians and to the Arabs that this is a brutal regime. These are brutal people who haven't learned a lesson from what genocide had done to them in, 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 you know, during the Second World War, they should have learned a lesson that if this has happened to us or we have been victimized all in the thousands of years, we need to be humane with the Palestinians, which has, which has, which has not, not happened. So I do not know that is this illegality. I have my doubts as that this can be rolled back to 1948 or previously when the British had the mandate given to them by the League of Nations to 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 oversee uh, Palestine, and then they, they and they left. And I I have no problem with that. The British colonial powers or any colonial power have always left these these things, you know, these these open wounds for the successor governments to 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 you know to look at. So I doubted very much. It ideally yes, but I doubted very much that what has happened in 1948 can be, can be reversed. The only thing which can happen is that the occupied areas like Jerusalem and like the West Bank should be, should be cleared, or the settlers who have been expanding, literally speaking, on a daily basis, this should go. Because what has happened is that those who have been living in these areas for thousands of years are being pushed out into refugee camps and they are being victimized. Right, uh, Mr. Kiani, let's uh, talk a little bit about the International Court of Justice, now uh, also known as the World Court, the highest uh, seat of justice, uh, if we talk globally. 
Now, when we talk about the justice system or the high seat of justice or the world court, naturally there happens to be a question that arises in the mind that uh, whenever it gives a ruling, uh, it should be implemented. So implementation comes with a mechanism of enforcement. Now, when this world's highest seat of justice gives a ruling or orders about certain uh, thing or gives its uh, understanding about a certain matter under consideration, isn't there uh, an intrinsic need of having a mechanism of enforcement of its ruling? And if it is not there with the International Court of Justice that is known as the world's court or the highest uh, seat of justice, so what's the use of having that highest uh, seat of justice when there is no mechanism in place in order to enforce or implement its ruling? See, it doesn't have an international police to enforce its decision. But there is a, but there is, a, there is, there is another caveat, I tell you frankly. Even though this cannot be implemented right away, but I can tell you one thing, the, the court order against the the Israeli and the Hamas leadership is a, is a slippery slope because I tell you there are countries and I tell you which include United Kingdom and other countries where if this leadership go they will be either arrested on arrival or on, on their departure from those countries I can tell you one frankly this is something which is like a democracy sword on their heads this is something they don't have the international police I agree with you and then this is the thing, this is the reason that there is an outcry within Israel, Israel why this has happened. This is something, but in my opinion, a very significant move on part of the International Court of Justice. Because if, even though they don't have international police, but if they also keep quiet and allow the criminality to continue, then where do we go? So, in my opinion, it's a very positive development. And the, these countries, those who are now in the war, they should learn a lesson from that. Because with the, as the war doesn't end, I said to you, the common... I, I seek your pardon for the interjection over here. Uh, a welcome development when you talk about those arrest warrants uh, at the International Criminal Court regarding those three uh, Palestinian resistance groups, leaders, and also the Prime Minister and the Defense Minister of State, uh, Israeli regime. Uh, so, when we talk about the ICJ, on the other hand, the International Court of Justice, now, uh, the mechanism that you have described, uh, the kind of a threat or a hanging sword uh, for these five leaders, uh, which, has been, uh, which have been sought the arrest warrants against, they, if they land uh, in those countries which are part of the, or the member of the ICC would be arrested. So what about that ruling or the interim injunctions already which was given, uh, were given by the ICJ and most recently also the International Court of Justice ordering Israel to stop its Rafa offensive and open the Rafa crossing between Egypt and Gaza. So there is a clearly difference. So uh, uh, talking about the second case, how to implement that ruling of ICJ when it orders Israel to stop its Rafa offensive? You see, International Court of Justice, it interprets, interprets international law. Here, here, which are saying that they should stop because it is against a, the, the very tenets of that the, they have violated the sovereignty of the, the Hamas territory. On the other hand, National Criminal Court judges the countries on, the, on what they are doing on, uh, the, the, uh, as far as the, the humanitarian aspect is concerned, criminality. So this is, there are two things. But I would say that more important thing would be the ICC. I will just give you an example. I hope I'm not wrong, but one of the, I think it was the, uh, I think the Argentinian leadership or another country whose leader was unwell and came to United Kingdom after, 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 he was about to leave. He was an old man, maybe about 90 years of age, when the police arrested him, that we have a warrant against your arrest. But then he was brought back and let off by the court because of old age. This is something which, which the, the Israeli leadership should understand. And unfortunately, good or bad, but it is a democracy sword on the Hamas leadership also.
Right, a quick comment, Mr. Yunus, regarding this ICC's arrest warrants for those five well, see, leaders. See, the, 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 the three of them are Hamas leaders and two of them are uh, Netanyahu and his uh, war. Actually, I don't know how they will implement it, but yes, I'm sure they can easily implement it on Hamas leaders. They can maybe because they are, they, they, they are there in Qatar, so they might, you know, like force Qatar to uh, give them to the court of justice and it, it, this may happen but it will never happen to the israelis i'm quite sure about that even if they travel to somewhere because there is a different mechanism israelis have a different mechanism have a different uh, way of living have a different relation with the all those what all the, all this organization all these institutions so it's not the same at all so it will never happen against the israelis but yes it may happen for hamas either i, I don't think this will going to make any or bring any justice to palestinians mr abu bakr yunus arab journalist thank you very much for taking thank time you. out thank for today's views on news we really appreciate that mr shahid mg kiani former ambassador thank you very much for your time sir also for being with us on the show tonight really appreciate that with that we come to the end of today's episode thank you very much for being with us